Next is a speaker who is currently in her grade 12 year at Crescent Heights High School. She's passionate about mental wellness and is a strong advocate for more accessible resources for youth. Please put your hands together for Ariel Locke. Was popping. <laughs> I, so when they gave us like this topic next, I didn't expect everyone to kind of like pop off with all this serious stuff. Um, I wrote my speech in a comic sans, so... Hi. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Next, a self-empowerment pop and R&B song with elements of synth pop. Its lyrics discuss many of Grande's past relationships. The song is an ode to gratitude, an anthem to fresh starts and new beginnings where she is not afraid to be raw and vulnerable. As a 17 year old, I have absolutely no experience in relationships, but here's my take on it. Don't feel old to listening to me. I'm Ariel Locke and I'm about to graduate high school. I'm sure that everyone can remember when they were 17. Oh yeah, that stupid teenager. Yeah, you're not too far off there. Um, I'm here to talk about the dumbest things I've done to impress others and some memorable stories I've had leading up to this day. I, so Bulbasaur is the first Pokemon in the Pokedex. I remember I liked this guy named Alex back in kindergarten. And just like Bulbasaur, he was the first of many crushes. My justification was, both our names start with the letter A. It's fate. To impress them, I would walk across the soccer field over and over while carrying books because in High School Musical, Gabriella would do that. Didn't really work out for me. Wonder why. I liked a guy named Aaron in grade two or three. He had a really round face and he always wore this blue shirt, same color as this mud kit. I thought we had a lot in common. We would dig rocks in the playground together. But one day I caught him digging rocks with another girl in our class. And on that day, I learned that men ain't it. But I stalked him on Facebook. The mud kit evolution holds up. In grade five, I told one of my best friends now, Will, that I liked his friend. Within five minutes, he already told his friends that I liked him. Uh, in return, his friend actually liked me back. Uh, so we hold hands during recess, and then we never talk about it again. Uh, my dad thinks he's gay now. Uh, <laughs> I like to think of my rough hands as the spark that lit his epiphany. Uh, Will, if you're listening, you're a snake. <laughs> when I first started junior high, I liked a guy in grade nine. I know, scandalous. Uh, to this day, we're still friends. We have this inside joke where we give each other fruits on our birthdays. In the year we first started talking, he painted me a poorly done pineapple and told me to flip it over. It said, if you were a fruit, you would be a fine apple. Um, I still think about that to this day. It's not often you get a genuine compliment like that. <laughs> All right, has anyone ever heard of Chinese school? It's a soul-crushing kind of Saturday school taught all in Chinese. Uh, my teacher fell down the stairs and I was transferred to this new class where I met this guy named Hilton. He was cute and he had prominent cheekbones. I called him Cheekbone Guy, original. Uh, he liked video games, so I got into video games to impress him, but then I ended up becoming one of the best players of, of League of Legends at 14, all because I wanted to impress a guy who would ghost me in the future. What's up, Hilton? Anyways, <laughs> in that league career, I came across this other guy named Duck who is boosting cheekbone guy. Boosting is when you play on someone else's account to make them a higher rank. Um, he ended up being my first boyfriend. He was pretty chill. Uh, I saw him maybe three times in eight months. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't really work out. Wonder why. <laughs> All right. Um, I watched the rom-com every day. Oh, word. I'm a little ahead. I'm just... Okay, so I'm a real for a while, I lost hope. Uh, my older friends told me about some of the dates they were having in university. So in awkward silence, my friend asked to date, hey, what's your favorite animal? To which he replies, ants. They're always on that grind, always carrying their own weight. And she's like, how about bees? They're always working. And he goes, nah, bees sting you and hurt you. And she replies, yo, fire ants exist. And he chooses to ignore her. On the way home, he turns off the music in her car and is like, Childish Gambino is garbage. Let me show you real music. And he plays gospel music all the way home. No talking in her car. And for the longest time, I really believed that it was it for me. I'm sure you guys knew what it felt like to be a lonely 17-year-old. I mean, you guys are here on a Monday night. <laughs> You guys are probably drama kids, let's be real. <laughs> so I just stopped looking for guys. 
So I was happy for the longest time. I focused on myself, focused on my friends, focused on improving myself for myself. It was years of me being able to learn what really mattered to me. I got really buff, by the way, from exercising every day, and I never felt better. That's how I met this dude. <laughs> Had to search up ugliest Pokemon to find this picture for him. What seemed like a perfect year was instantly ruined. Keep in mind, I was 16. Do you guys have a name that you instantly cringe from? My own name. Your name? <laughs> I stepped on something I shouldn't have there. Um, anyways, that was my dude. That's an ugly Pokemon, was not a good person. And that's when I learned that I can't rely on anyone else for my own happiness. I had to learn to love myself before I, wow, before I could love anyone else. So I was completely done with ever falling in love for like a good two months. <laughs> I sat in front of a cutie in my math class who asked me to be his partner for a quiz. And in return, I wanted him to be my partner for life. <laughs> and suddenly, I threw away all of my past relationship shaming and became the person, same person I was in kindergarten, walking across his soccer field with books in my arms. Uh, he thinks epitome is pronounced epitome. <laughs> he denies that he has a foot fetish, but we all know. <laughs> he talks in his sleep. <laughs> The moment I knew that I liked him, uh, he came over after a five-hour exam with only two hours of sleep. He stayed awake to make me happy, but when he eventually passed out, he snored so loudly. Couldn't help but be so happy with someone in that moment. I just never felt so comfortable. <laughs> and there's something amazing that the right person can do for you, you know? The way that like they can always cheer you on to be a better person, or the way... <laughs> or the way that he always has his other people's happiness in mind. He really inspired me to become a more caring, selfless 17-year-old. And this is kind of like my rom-com moment where I get a hold of Boombox outside of his house. Um, I believe that a good relationship is one that encourages you to be the best person you can. And he did that for me. Thank you, Hazard. <laughs> NYC, by the way, Mary's Youth Council. Oh, um, I wasn't sure how to fit this in, but when I was a baby, um, I was allergic to eggs, like deathly allergic. But then uh, my dad was like, nah, allergies aren't real. So he put like <laughs> eggs into all my meals. I literally could have died, but he really put that like sneaky. Anyways, I almost died. <laughs> Thank you, next.